Hello there. Thanks for tuning into Town Meeting TV. My name is Bobby Lucier. Today we are joined by a few of the folks who attended the Democratic National Convention for Vermont. If each of you can just introduce yourselves, give a little bit of background and how you came to um, came to be one of the delegates or just an attendee at the at the convention and we'll start with you Samantha. Sure my name is Samantha I live in Hancock Vermont which is in Addison County on Route 100. Um, I have worked in and around Vermont politics and government for about 10 years. Uh, I'm an engaged member of the Democratic Party also an organization here called Emerge Vermont and I am not working on a campaign this primary cy cycle so I thought this may be a good time for me to run for delegate and have the experience of going to a convention. So I ran in the state convention in May and was elected delegate by our town delegates from around the state and was really excited to go and so felt so fortunate for the opportunity. And then the whole world changed and this became the most sort of exciting convention of all time and was even, even more happy to be headed to Chicago. Thanks so much, Samantha. Yeah. And you were the chair? Or yeah, the I'm the immediate past chair of the Vermont Democratic Party, and I was not going to go. I have been involved in politics for a really long time. I was chair of the Rutland County Democrats for many years, and I never really wanted to be a de delegate. It just seemed like a chaotic, like, scrum. It just seemed too exhausting. And then things changed as you said it became the most exciting uh, you know convention that we could imagine it was a sea change and it was only a few days after that that um, Mary Sullivan our um, Vermont uh, oh I just forgot the committee name. woman yeah committee woman um, realized that it was going to be very hard for her to go she called and asked if I would like to go and I was thrilled and I'm just so glad that I was there yeah, awesome. um, Arshad how did you wind up going with this group to Chicago? Well, this is my fourth convention, my third as a delegate for Vermont. And yeah, I wanted to go because I just think this is such an important year. So I went as a, as a Biden delegate, and then as everyone said, everything changed. Uh, we became Harris delegates, which is a very different process how that normally happens, right? We actually chose to become Harris delegates. We voted to become Harris delegates, which is pretty amazing. Um, but my involvement in politics, uh, I actually came to Vermont for political work. Howard Dean brought me here almost 20 years ago, and I worked for his organization for a while, and then I just decided to stay here. So I work in national politics mostly, um, and then still, still get pretty involved locally here as well. So I became a delegate here uh, for my third time. I decided to go, and as everyone else has said, this was a phenomenal, extraordinary, obviously very unique, convention year to go, and uh, I'm so thrilled I was able to go. Awesome. And Asher, joining us online, can you share a little bit about uh, what brought you to the convention? I'd be happy to, Bobby. Uh, first and foremost, my name is Asher Edelson. I am a, a teacher uh, from Bennington. Uh, I'm hearing myself echo now, which is going to be fun. Um, as many of you may or may not have guessed, I have Tourette syndrome, so when I ran for, uh, to be a delegate, I ran to represent folks with disabilities. Um, that was what I attempted to do, at least as a delegate, and it was a really wonderful convention, uh, absolutely historic. Uh, I've had the pleasure of actually teaching uh, the kids at my school all about what a convention is and what that process looks like in a nutshell. Um, you know, it was really phenomenal to be a delegate. I had ran before and not gotten the nod this time. Uh, I was elected as a delegate and honored to do so uh, and hoping to do it again at some point. So thank you for having me on and for including uh, us folks who couldn't make the drive up to Burlington. Awesome. Thank you all so much for being here. Sounds like it was a very energetic and exciting convention. Uh, before we jump into some highlights from each of you, I wanted to uh, ground us in a quick clip of the roll call and the, the moment that Vermont cast uh, the, the, its 24 delegates for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. So I'm gonna do that now, if I can quickly get. Vermont, how do you cast your vote? Vermont knows the value of public education. We even have a teacher as our congresswoman. And a 
1777, we were the first state to place public education in our Constitution. As someone with significant learning disabilities, I know the value of investing in every single child. We are proud to call Vermont home, and we are proud to cast our 24 votes for Kamala Harris, because we are not going back. So that was your that, that was everyone's Yeah, that was a democratic of, process yeah. to get yeah. to Noah Khan. That's so funny. So yeah. speaking of democratic process, I also just want to ask about the uh, the process to switch the votes from uh, President Biden to Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. So what was that process like in Vermont and how was that decision made? Well, for all pledged Biden delegates, the moment that he withdrew his candidacy, we all became um, free to, uh, we, we became unpledged delegates. So we ran as a Biden delegate, which means we were pledged to vote for Biden at the convention. And then when he withdrew, all 4,000 and change delegates became unpledged and were free to select a candidate to support on the convention floor. And then, I don't know if one of you want to explain kind well, of how we came to that choice. Go ahead, because you're a delegate. Well, so you know, for weeks there have been speculation about whether or not Biden was going to drop out, right? That didn't really matter to us because we were pledged delegates. When he did drop out, we could do whatever we wanted, right? Not exactly. So anyone could run at that point as a nominee. The DNC rules allow anyone who gets more than 300 um, delegates to sign their nominating petition from at least five states um, could be eligible to run. But honestly, for most of us, that we weren't thinking about like, oh, well, maybe I'll do this, maybe do that, maybe do this, whatever. Um, when our state party chair and our delegation chair, David, called me, told me, hey, you know, Biden has dropped out, which I knew because I have a phone near me. <laughs> um, you know, uh, he said, well, so what are you thinking? And here's, I'll say what I said, uh, which anyone else could say whatever. Um, but I had already had opinions formed that if he was going to drop out, the only person I really actually wanted to support was Kamala Harris. I didn't want, you know, a million and one people to spend a million and one weeks figuring out, you know, like a whole new primary which process. They didn't have which we one weeks. didn't have. <laughs> the reality of the weeks. situation very suddenly was also, to me, very clear. Kamala Harris is our vice president. It's also somebody who had also voted on mm -hmm. because she, her name was also on the ballot. To me, this was very clear, and it was an amazing opportunity to have a to cast a historic vote. So David called me up and said, "Hey, uh, you know, Biden had dropped out," and I said, "Well, there's only one candidate I'm interested in supporting, and I'm not really interested in a long drawn out primary where we have another 16 candidates to choose from in a matter of I don't know how many days or weeks. Um, I already know who I'm going to choose." And uh, David then later told me, "You know, Biden has also endorsed Kamala Harris." Mm -hmm. That made it even easier for me. And it happened, something like this, I think, in every delegation across the country, mm -hmm. all very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I remember asking David, okay, well, have you gotten a hold of everybody? Are we all on board? Um, I would really, I thought I would really like it if we could all agree to this and have a discussion and come to this unanimously. But it happened without any kind of you know, it wasn't something acrimonious. It is something that we had a discussion about. We all call, had a call a couple days later. Mm -hmm. um, but we came to the call, maybe for all of our different reasons, but we came to the call to very similar conclusions that yes, we wanted to move forward and we wanted to support Kamala Harris and her bid. And at the end of the day, there were no other candidates who had actually gotten enough nominating pledges to begin with. Kamala Harris was the one that delegation after delegation after delegation, more than 4,000 of us all decided to vote on. Mm -hmm. right. Anything to add on the nominating process from either of you or, or Ash online? I would add that in that, I think it was two days, a day and a half after is when we met. It was it was fast. And by that time, like Tennessee and California and all these other states had made the same decision. Um, I was thinking about two things. One, what is the will of Democratic primary voters in Vermont? And as Arshad said, they voted for a Biden-Harris ticket. And I felt confident that that was um, what our voters and constituents in the party and party members who we represent wanted to see happen. And then the second question for me was, who's going to beat Donald Trump? And again, in that very short period of time, within 24 or 36 hours, it was crystal clear that that person was Kamala Harris. Yeah. Asher, anything to add about that decision process or what that looked like for you? 
I was honored to be part of that decision. That's all I have to say. Um, like Samantha had already pointed out, it was a democratic process. Um, <laughs> not one delegate was required to vote for Harris or any other candidate. Uh, in Vermont, we unanimously decided that Harris was the person we wanted. Um, so uh, I was just glad to be a part of a historic nomination. Thank you. Yeah. And so you arrived at the, at the convention in Chicago. How many of, of uh, how many Vermont folks actually made it to the convention this year? So there were 24 delegates between at-large district delegates, which is what me and Arshad are and Asher, um, and the automatic delegates, which include our congressional and federal delegation. Um, and then we think there was maybe 35 Vermonters altogether. Altogether, yeah. So yeah. An another 10 to 12, yeah. yeah. And it was very exciting from the moment we got to the airport because I think almost all of us At were dawn. on planes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was very early. Yeah. yeah. But there were, we were, almost all of us were on planes with other Vermonters who were going. And it just was immediate bonding. We were just so happy to be there. Yeah. Some, some folks didn't make it for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some oh, folks had bad. a really hard time. Yeah. And it took up to two days. But for those of us who were there very early, it was just, we were already, it felt like we were all, we were on, we were on board from the minute we got to the airport. Mm -hmm. The energy hits you right away, mm -hmm. right? Like you land and they have all these, you know, volunteers from the host city, you know, kind of cheering you on. Um, if anything, I would have, I would have gone a day earlier because the hotels are really expensive, but I would have gone a day earlier just because even the day before the convention properly starts, there's still plenty of events, plenty of things to do. You get to check in with your delegation. You get to get your, you know, stuff. You got to put all your bags down. Um, there were events from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. There was energy, you know, from from when you wake up to when you go to bed way, way, way too late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. just so much, there's so much to do, and there's so much energy. And I will say this, and this includes even 2008. I went to 2008, which is another amazing year. The energy and the enthusiasm was unparalleled. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. Talk about the so so many events happening. There are also some really big speeches. What are a couple of highlights that come to mind, either conversations or moments in the the big convention hall that um, felt particularly memorable for either for each of you? Maybe so Anne. Many. <laughs> I mean, when Hillary Clinton, she spoke on the first night and kind of early, like it, she spoke during prime time on the first night, and I was just like, how does it get? better than this. Like this is like the first primetime hour of the first night of the convention. We've got four nights ago. I mean, that was a redemption story. I felt like for everyone mm -hmm. in the it the energy was um high. She hit it out of the park. I mean, she burned it down. That was one moment that struck me early. I think many of the survivors of gun violence and of these draconian abortion bans in southern states and um, even of climate disaster, who spoke as people and voters and citizens were very compelling, and they, those words continued to resonate with me a week later. Um, Michelle Obama's speech was like on yeah, another level. Gosh. I, I would like that to was, talk about that. I just, I felt yeah. Michelle Obama gave the speech of a lifetime. Yep. Absolutely. And it was both the w I'm getting what she said, just like remembering. But, but just even her cadence mm -hmm. and the way she engaged. All of us, and to be there, I mean, I'm sure it was a wonderful experience watching on TV, but it, yeah, it, it, it almost gave me shivers down my back. I mean, it really was the speech of a lifetime, and, and there was so much weighing on it, and she pulled it off. I don't think she could have done any better. It was really a beautiful, beautiful, um, just exciting, inspiring time among so many others. As, it was a as collective, you said. yeah, it was. I keep when I tell people who weren't there, like, I wish the floor was mic'd. Like, I wish yeah. people on TV could have heard what I could hear of people behind me and in front of me and to my left and right, like, responding and resonating. And um, it was just like 20,000 people just locked in. Like, that was, I don't, the speech isn't even the right word. I don't know what she did. It was a sermon. I mean, it, it felt yeah. like. I'm not a churchgoer, but it felt like she's taking us to church, and it felt yeah. like that a number of times throughout the uh, yeah. throughout the convention. So, 
like disclosure, I do communications training for uh, uh, you know for candidates, for leaders, for whatever. She was so good, not just because oh she did all of the right things, like checked all the right boxes. It wasn't about that at all. I think she understood the context of the moment that we were all in, mm -hmm. and the gravity of the of, of what we we're about to do for the next you know eighty or so days, and. I think there was another dynamic at play too, because if you remember, I think it was like eight years ago when she did that speech. You know, when they go high, when they go low, we go high. Mm -hmm. That whole thing, and we've just been through, you know, eight, twelve years of just some of the lowest things we could have in politics. And it's not that she eschewed any of that, but instead she was like, it felt like to me she was saying in the speech, but don't mistake our kindness for. Uh, weakness, mm -hmm. because she came and she took everyone to task, you know, who needed to be taken to task. And I, it felt like a release. It felt like, uh, you know, a, a, a new call to action. I, of all the speeches, and there were so, so many speeches, yeah. and so many of them were yeah. good, but there were so many speeches, of all of them, and I'm including our Democratic nominee, of all of our speeches, Michelle Obama's was the absolute highlight. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Asher, any experiences, speeches, moments that really stood out to you? Well, Hillary received the standing ovation of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Truly legendary. Um, uh, it was quite the thing to behold. I am almost certain it lasted five minutes. I've never once experienced an applause to the level that Hillary received. And there were some other wonderful speeches by uh, Michelle Obama, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Kamala Harris, Tim Waltz. <laughs> Throughout the week, we had not only the United Center to look forward to, <laughs> there were a variety of booths and caucuses and councils that would meet too. <laughs> um, <laughs> during uh, the Disability Caucus, um, which met on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, uh, during our Tuesday meeting, uh, Ayanna Presley spoke, and I got to meet her and take a selfie with her, and that was really wonderful. She struck me as such a down-to-earth, kind person. Um, so getting to meet someone who is, you know, a person with a disability, um, representing, you know, not Vermont, but Massachusetts in Congress, was really quite special. And the whole thing, getting to <laughs> interact with fellow delegates, not only from Vermont, but from other states as well, was remarkable and just a wonderful experience. So uh, between the speeches and getting to know other people and, and, and learning about how um, other folks are living in the country really right. was a wonderful experience all around. So... That's what I would yeah, say. Yeah, I have to regarding. say that some of my most meaningful conversations were on the bus mm -hmm. because we were on the bus a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it took a long time. And, for example, I talked to three labor union leaders from Texas and just hearing their stories of how they got to where they are in leadership positions and the kind of fights that they've had to you know, put up with and the way they bonded and, and led was fascinating. It was just, it was incredible. It, it really was amazing. Both the, I mean, it was wonderful because we're such a small delegation that the camaraderie that we all had at our, you know, every seven, every morning at 7.30 when somehow we dragged ourselves out of bed like, wow, that was hard. <laughs> but then once you got down there with everybody, it was just a wonderful experience to also, yeah, really getting to hear these amazing stories of of people and 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 the fights that they've led and like somebody telling me that she's leading an effort in I think uh, South Carolina to drive people to the courthouse to pick up their absentee ballot registration so they can make sure that because that's how hard it is mm -hmm. just to hear what people have to go through it was really very moving yeah 
one of the things that Asher just pointed out is that there are so many things to do, not just at the main uh, center, the, the United Center where the main speeches are, but during the day and during the afternoon, there's all these other events. Uh, there's, the McCormick Convention Hall has caucuses, for example, and booths and everything that you can visit. I know that one of the things I got involved with was the LGBTQ caucus. Tim Waltz came in and spoke, and it was actually ended up being one of my biggest highlights of the whole four days. There were the five days, six days. How long were we there? Yeah. Um, it, it, he was so genuine and honest and kind and also fierce, which I think is kind of the theme for this convention. That was an amazing experience. I got to work with a number of the delegates who are working hard to get issues around Palestine and Gaza more heard at our convention. Um, and I, was, I joined the ceasefire delegates. And that was also another experience. This is a different experience to have for a lot of these delegates. And so that was also something that was both difficult and also inspiring to have at the same time. There's lunches. I got invited to a lunch just about redistricting, one of the wonkiest topics, right? But it was fantastic because it was Nancy Pelosi and Eric Holder, and you know, it was and it was lunch, and it was great. You never knew when you were going to eat. Yeah. Um, so I was like, great lunch, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> but you know, I learned all this stuff about the state of redistricting in this country, which you don't, you know, you don't get more than a snippet here or there every now and then in the news. But when you're at this convention and you're just immersed in LGBTQ politics, immersed in Palestine, immersed in, you know, a briefing on redistricting. There's so many opportunities to learn all of the different ways that so many of us are working to make a difference. Mm -hmm. I've got only five minutes left. 30 minutes flies by, as wow. I'm sure you all know from, from this past week. Uh, what I want to end on, just in terms of the election coming up, takeaways from the convention, what is the... <clears throat> uh, strategic direction of the Democratic Party? What are the priorities and how are you all thinking about supporting the Harrison Walls ticket moving forward in, in um, into September and October? And, I mean, do you want to start? Yeah. Sure. So um, to me, what one of the reasons I'm a strong Democrat and what I think came through very loud and clear is is addressing the inequities that are just part and parcel of our system and have been um, you know, th during the, uh, the the Trump years, just were entrenched, and I think that to me that is so important. Whether it be housing, health care, LGBTQ um, plus issues, uh, access to abortion care, these are all things that are real that that are worse for people with less, and just addressing tax policy. Um, addressing edu public education, these these kind of things came. So so really addressing the inequities in the environmental justice is another thing. Um, Gaza, we have to speak mm -hmm. to that. I was very pleased. Um, I you know I wish there had been more. I I do think that it would have been wonderful to have a speaker actually on the in the convention, Great. but that issue was front and center, and some people did address it, including our you know presidential candidate. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. I think I, back to Michelle Obama's barn burner, uh, one thing that she said was, this is not a time to be Goldilocks. And you know, in previous conventions, like Hillary, Bernie, even the Vermont delegation had pledged Bernie delegates and pledged Hillary delegates. What was so unique about this convention is that we had a national gathering and territories like American Samoa and the Virgin Islands um, of the really full Big Ten of the Democratic Party um, and we have no time. I think we're down to 72 days. We have 72 days to fight the fight of our lives and <clears throat> so I left Chicago feeling energized and committed and really committed to um, that vision of, um, it may be imperfect. I think the c critiques about discussions around Gaza and the ceasefire are fair. I didn't hear um, discussion of the opioid crisis, which I think is devastating mm -hmm. rural America and has been for a decade. Um, but we can talk about that in December. 
Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it is time to work. Like, yeah. it is time to hit As the phones, it's time to hit the doors. Lives. We yeah. are in the fight of our lives. Yeah. Whether that, you know, regardless of what your top issue is, if it's abortion access, if it's a ceasefire um, agreement, if it's, um, you know, an assault rifle ban, um, disability and accessibility issues, um, we don't get to have those policy debates as fellow Democrats unless we mm -hmm. um, get a Harris Walls ticket through the November election. So that's what my focus is. That's exactly right. One of the one of my the people I, I've been working with for years and as a just in the trenches kind of activist had said, you know, we get a you know you might not agree with everything, but we get to choose our opposition. Mm -hmm. As in, not Trump, because that's not opposition you want. You don't get to really be at the table. But you might not agree with everything in the Harris Walls campaign, but you want to have them as the people on the other end of the of the negotiating table. That's why there's protests. That's why we're talking about all these different issues. The way that I see it, and I think that's really right, the way that I see it is that Trump took us to a deeply dark place in those years that he was a president, and he is eager to do so again, as are many other people. Biden pulled us out of that place. And it takes more than four years to repair all the damage. I think that's been done. What the Harris Walls ticket does is it presents a vision for the future, somewhere where we can go forward to. We can create a country that we that we dream of, and it won't happen overnight. But it has to happen. The first step has to be we get the people and power that we need, and it starts at the top with Harris Walls, and it goes all the way down the bottom, down to you know the metaphorical dog catcher. We have 70 something days to do that. Mm -hmm. And your question, what are we gonna do? I think we have to do everything that we can. So for some people that means donate, other people that means volunteer. I haven't told my business partner this, but I think I'm gonna take the last couple weeks off and I'm just gonna go to Pennsylvania. I've done this before and I think I can, I'm just gonna do that. Um, there's so much at stake. Mm -hmm. We gotta do it. Yeah, thank you all. Uh, Asher, your thoughts on uh, how to support the uh, Democratic nominees moving forward? Reminding folks that only one party is going to fight for people with disabilities. I also would like to point out that Vermont, uh, David Glidden, is, uh, Vermont's Democratic Party chairman, is the only person, we were the only state to mention people with disabilities. So I wanted to give that shout out, letting folks in Vermont know that we are on the front lines in the disability movement. I'm wearing my Harris for President shirt right now. That's one thing I'm going to do to help. Uh, furthermore, I'm going to talk about the issues and I'm going to do my best to uh, vocalize support for the best candidate in this race, who is Kamala Harris. So thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Asher. Thank you all for joining us today to talk about the convention and your experience. Really appreciate it. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Fun. Thanks for asking us. Yeah. Thank you for tuning into Town Meeting TV. You can find this program and many more on cctv.org. Thanks so much.